My name is Harper, and I used to have two older brothers. I say used to because they no longer live with us, and my parents refuse to give me a straight answer about where they went. Whenever I inquire, they simply tell me that my brothers went to live with our grandparents, or they brush it off, saying it doesn't matter anymore because they're gone. I can still vividly remember the last time I saw my oldest brother, Jacob. He and my father had a heated argument and the very next day, Jacob vanished. His room sat empty, yet my parents acted as if everything was normal. When I asked about Jacob, they'd assured me he'd return soon, but he never did. A similar unsettling situation occurred almost three weeks later with my other brother, Owen. However, there was no argument preceding his disappearance. He was there one day and inexplicably gone the next. I kept pressing my parents for answers about what happened to them, but they consistently avoided any meaningful conversation. I couldn't fathom why they refused to provide me with information. All I wanted was to know the fate of my brothers, and as I remained trapped in my thoughts, I began to notice something else unsettling. My parents began avoiding me as though I were invisible. Whenever I entered a room, their conversations would cease abruptly or shift to entirely new topics. Sometimes, they would abruptly abandon whatever they were doing and leave the room. After my second brother's disappearance, I decided I'd had enough. I contemplated calling the police, but when they arrived at our home, my parents somehow convinced them that I was their only child. They even presented doctor documents to support their claim and asserted that I was mentally unstable. The police chose to believe them and departed without further inquiry. I had hoped that once the police were gone, my parents would finally address the situation or at least react in some way. However, they continued their silence, leaving me in the abyss of loneliness in my own home without my brothers. I stretched out on my bed and stared at the ceiling, determined to unravel the mystery surrounding my family. I knew I had to come up with a plan and so I did. The only way to discover the truth was to eavesdrop on my parents when they were alone. Thus, my plan was set in motion, I would sneak into their bedroom and hide beneath their bed before they retired for the night, then slip away once they were asleep. It seemed like a foolproof way to gather some answers. That evening, we all sat at the dining table in a cloud of silence, much like we had done for the past month or so. Our meals were consumed without a word exchanged, and our gaze remained fixed on our plates as we shoveled down the uninspiring meatloaf. After finishing my meal, I excused myself from the table and returned to my room to wait. My parents adhered to a consistent bedtime routine, so I knew it wouldn't be challenging to slip under their bed before they came to sleep. As the appointed hour approached, I stealthily crept into their bedroom, taking care not to make any floorboards creak that might betray my presence downstairs. I maneuvered under their bed, navigating through the thick veil of dust that hung in the air. Once I settled under the bed and the bed skirt concealed me, I was shrouded in complete darkness. All I had to do now was wait. So I waited, and waited. Eventually, I drifted into slumber, baffled by the fact that my parents hadn't retired to their bedroom at the usual time. But when they finally did come to bed and my father settled in, I roused from my impromptu nap. Their voices reached my ears, although it was the tail end of their conversation that I heard. This will definitely work, my mother's voice chimed, sounding content, but perhaps we should consider something less extreme. I strained to understand what they were discussing. My father responded, yes, you're absolutely right. We'll explore other options. Their conversation ended with the faint sound of a quick kiss, followed by the creaking of the bed as my father settled in. Then, the room fell into an eerie silence, punctuated only by their rhythmic breathing. Once I was certain they had drifted off to sleep, I slipped out of their bedroom and returned to my own. Lying in bed, I pondered the enigmatic conversation I had overheard and wondered what they could be planning. The next day, I resolved to hide beneath their bed once more, determined not to succumb to sleep this time. As I lay in my covered spot, I eagerly awaited their conversation, my determination unwavering. They entered the bedroom, but there was no mention of anything unusual. My persistence remained steadfast, and I was prepared to crawl under that bed night after night if necessary until I unearthed the truth. This routine persisted for nearly a week, and I couldn't shake the nagging feeling that they were concealing something drastic. Finally, on one fateful evening, my parents broached a topic that sent shivers down my spine. We could always send him to military school, my mother suggested as they entered the bedroom, their voices hushed. 
That might work. My father responded. My heart raced. Could this be related to where my brothers had gone? Yes. But the only problem with that is that when he finishes school, they'll just ship him back, my father continued. I strained to understand what they were discussing, my heart pounding in my chest. I know, my mother replied, her tone pensive, but we have to think of something. I like him more than the others. My father sighed deeply, his weight shifting above me. Yes, but we can't go on like this. It's draining us. Listen, get some sleep, my mother urged, and I heard the sound of a tender kiss. Try not to think about it. Once they had retired for the night, I retreated to my own bedroom, attempting to make sense of what I had just heard. My parents had done something to my brothers. I didn't know the details, but it was becoming increasingly evident that their story about staying with my grandparents was a fabrication. The subsequent nights passed uneventfully, with no further revelations. However, something peculiar began to occur. My parents started acting strangely nice towards me. They would often gaze at me with smiles on their faces, their eyes seemingly lost in a daydream. Then, abruptly, they would get up and leave the room, leaving me with an eerie and unsettling feeling. After nearly two weeks of secretly eavesdropping in their bedroom, I was still no closer to uncovering the truth. Then, one day, something unexpected happened. When I returned home from school, I was greeted by a birthday cake, and my parents cheerfully exclaimed, Happy 18th birthday! I was taken aback, my birthday was eight months away, and they were well aware of it. Perplexed, I began to ask questions. Their response left me even more bewildered. They claimed they had forgotten to inform me that I had always celebrated my birthday on the wrong date. The situation grew even stranger when I noticed a military bus arriving. My parents handed me some bags and informed me that they had arranged a surprise for my birthday, an enrollment in military school. I vehemently refused, but two imposing men disembarked from the bus and advanced towards me. In sheer panic, I fled. I sprinted down the street, never looking back until sheer exhaustion forced me to stop. Collapsing onto the curb, I scanned the empty road behind me. To my relief, no one was pursuing me. Moments later, a car pulled up beside me, and a police officer inquired about my presence. I contemplated sharing the sinister truth about my parents' intentions, but a fear that the police would side with them, as they had in the past, overcame me. Instead, inexplicably, I decided to run from the police as well. It felt as though the entire world was conspiring against me. Despite my efforts, the police apprehended me, and I found myself subjected to an interrogation. My uncooperative behavior had aroused suspicion, and they contemplated calling my parents to collect me. Overwhelmed by desperation, I broke down in tears and begged them not to contact my parents. It was then that I began to speak openly, recounting the ordeal I had endured. The disappearances of my brothers, my parents' malevolent intentions, and the fabricated documents they used to conceal their actions. Upon hearing my account, the police initiated a covered investigation into my parents' activities, and I was compelled to cooperate. As they delved into my parents' records, I was stunned to discover that 17 years ago, they had adopted three children, Jacob, Ella, and Dylan. For a moment, I grappled with confusion, but then the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. Those three brothers the police mentioned were none other than me and my two siblings. However, it was disconcerting to learn that those weren't our real names or birth dates. Why had our parents concealed our adoption from us and manipulated our identities in such a deceptive manner? The police inquiries continued and they probed deeper into the circumstances surrounding our adoption. It was revealed that my brothers and I had been born in the same month, which struck me as exceedingly strange. I had always believed we were of different ages. The revelation left me even more bewildered and upset. Why had our parents kept this crucial information from us? What had driven them to alter our names and birth dates? With these questions gnawing at me, the police made an intriguing proposition. They asked if I would be willing to return to my parents' home, wearing a concealed wire beneath my clothing, to gather more information. I didn't hesitate to accept their offer. The following day, I donned the wire and knocked on my parents' door, knowing that an undercover police car awaited nearby. Upon seeing me, my parents appeared genuinely surprised. I entered their home and initiated a barrage of questions. I confronted them with the knowledge of our adoption and the deception surrounding our identities. 
demanding that they finally reveal the truth. Their initial composure shattered, and for the first time, I witnessed them losing their temper. They engaged in a heated argument with each other, revealing that their plan had unraveled because they had underestimated my determination to uncover the truth. In a fit of anger, my father admitted the harsh reality. Yes, we were adopted, he admitted. Their decision to adopt us had been motivated solely by the social and financial benefits that their lawyer had outlined for them. In fact, they had amassed a substantial sum, nearly a quarter of a million dollars. Their sinister plot involved letting us go once we reached the age of 18 without exposing their fraudulent adoption scheme. That's when the truth unfolded further. Their sinister schemes had ensnared my brothers as well. One of them had been lured into working overseas under the guise of an email from a reputable company. My other brother had been deceived into believing that his biological parents were wealthy millionaires residing in South Africa, prompting him to embark on a quest to find them. As for me, their plan involved shipping me off to the military, severing all contact, and relocating to another country. The enormity of their betrayal left me in disbelief, tears streaming down my cheeks. I longed to escape their clutches, However, my father's enraged shout shattered any semblance of hope. He demanded to know where I thought I was going with all these secrets, and before I could react he grabbed me forcefully. My supposed mother joined in to help subdue me. But just as their grip tightened, the police dramatically burst into the scene, putting an abrupt end to their sinister actions. Subsequently, both of them were apprehended, and the police concluded their investigation. Yet my quest to locate my brothers continued, fueled by a fervent hope that one day we would be reunited.